we love the Lord, we need to obey Him. Amen. So we have a water baptism in the um, first Sunday of the month. Amen. This is how we show how we love the Lord. Amen. So uh, everyone that is not water baptized yet, we have a schedule on first Sunday of this of next month amen in the afternoon so um if you have any question my brother and sister you can call this number 775 so uh, our announcement is in the program that way we don't forget it my brother and sister when uh meeting we have 6 30 to 7 30 at night every wednesday if you have um, a prayer request you can text or you can call this number that way we can you know we we, we bring all your petitions through prayer amen every friday we have a, a revival service in our church amen 6 30 to 7 30 men's fellowship we have the transformers first Sunday of the month after English service. Every first Monday of the month, we have Bible study at Rodilin's house at 6.30 p.m. Every first Saturday of the month, we have prayer and fasting. Amen? At Alvendia's home. Uh, every first Saturday of the month is open for home Bible study and we will pray that uh, uh, we will have again the Bible study at at Estrell's house. Amen. Hallelujah. We will pray for that. Amen. God God sanctifies the home of those who allow teaching God's words into their homes. So if you want that God sanctify our home, we let the word of God to be in in our house. Amen. Every third Saturday of the month, we have Rose of Sharon at Alvendia's home. This is not a permanent place, my brother and sister. So if there's anyone who will invite us to do the fellowship in their home, we will free to do so. Amen. Every fourth Saturday of the month, we have Bible study at Alvendia's home. You know what, my brother and sister? This is the key to know more of God. We got to know more of Him through His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. So, this is all the programs that we have in this small church, amen, where we are just praying that God will move in the small church, amen. If God is moved in the big churches, God can move in the small church too, amen. Do you agree on that, my brother and sister? So uh, this is all our announcement. So those who are willing to follow the Lord, amen, we got to show how we follow God, how we love the Lord. So, uh if you have any question, you are free to ask our pastor. And uh, they are not here today, but we are so blessed. There's somebody who is, is speak in their you know, position, my brother and sister. And you know what? Uh, they are the kahalili. Ano ba English ng kahalili? <laughs> Sila yung substitute. Amen? If there's no substitute, there's no, uh, there's no activity. Amen? So we are so glad there are a uh, man of God, a woman of God that commit themselves to be used by God. Amen. So uh, I am calling now our our brother in Christ, our beloved, our own beloved. Amen. Brother Resti Malia. Amen. Thank you. Let's bow our head in prayer. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity, for this wonderful day of service that you allowed us to gather together, <coughs> to hear your words, to worship you, to praise you, Lord. Forgive us for our, for our sins, Lord.
bless our pastors who are not here, who are both in Arizona, planting churches, Lord. Be with them and also for the congregation that they're trying to grow there, Lord. So Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Give me the wisdom, the words that I'm about to share to this congregation and also to the rest of the uh, people who will be watching this online, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Everyone say, Amen. As usual. Well, by the way, I think uh, for those folks who's got kids who are in school, here in Washoe, I think uh, the school's starting tomorrow, right? So, <laughs> homes will be a little bit more quiet again. The usual, when I start my sermon, I have a story. There's a, this is a, a child of an overseas Filipino worker where they have to pick up the remains of their mom who died overseas from working five years. And uh, they sent it home the older sister cannot go with the remains of their mom, unfortunately. So they sent it, the, the, the rest of the, the siblings picked pick the remains of the airport. They brought it home. They opened the casket. On top of the casket, they saw a letter. So they opened it. First thing is, before they opened it, what they notice, what they have observed is like the casket is heavy. And their mom is just a small lady. She's like maybe not more than 90 pounds, but when they carry it, she goes like, man, this feels like about 150, 200 pounds. Can't believe mom gained so much weight. That's what they said. So they, they opened it and the letter says, you know, Dear, dear Mirna, I am saddened of the fact that I cannot come, you know, accompany the remains of my, our mom. It's just the reason because I don't have enough leave anymore. So I have to kind of just send it and you guys receive it. And by the way, on the letter it says, uh, If you notice that mom is kind of plump and heavy. And then he says the, the letter is started to explain. Well, as you could see, mom is wearing five layers of shirt. Different types, different designs. Those five shirts, uh, give that to your cousin. And... Uh, She's also wearing three pairs of pants, Levi's, corduroy, and all of that. Uh, give that to your, um, to your other cousins up in the province. Oh, yeah. She, you notice also she's wearing about four pairs of bra. Give that to your aunties. They look at her arms. There's about four types of wrist watches. Oh, your brother likes uh, one of them, the younger brother, give that to him. And the, the last one, give that to, the, uh, to, uh, to your nephew. And two bracelets, give that to your uh, other sister. Her fingers also have rings. <laughs> and she got socks, five pairs of socks. Give that to your uncle. And she got Nike shoes, and he said, oh, yeah, you could give that to your husband. On her head, she's even wearing a bonnet, like uh, Benny. If it gets cold, you could keep that. And the letter says, uh, like, yeah, by the time you have given all the goodies to respective uh, recipients, Mom will wind up not wearing anything, so you guys better dress her up, what you got there. 
And yeah, the the material that their mom was shipped is made out of the uh, Balikbayan box uh, taped together. Anyway, uh, getting into our series, uh, you know, that's about that, that letter. A reference verse is found in Philippians, Book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 8 to 9. From NLT uh, version. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. Praise be to the word of God. The book of Philippians is kind of a short uh, saying. It is it's a prison episode. Episode means letter. Just not like the letter that I mentioned, you know, with the Balik Bayan box. Episodes, uh, they call it episodes from the New Testament letters written while in prison written by Paul while he was in prison in Rome. Primarily the uh, book of Philippians for his appreciation for the continued support of the uh, Philippians you know through his ministry including the funding part also and to encourage their growth. It's like Paul's rah-rah letter for the Philippians. He even says in one of his, in that episode that uh, supposed to be help joy. Imagine this guy is telling to be joyful while even in prison. That's a tough one to do, but it didn't matter. He was able to do it. He encouraged that, guys, be joyful. That's why, you know, the Lord is in him doing that. But for us, with our situation, for our topic right now, going you know, fast forward to the present time, in today's world, we have what we call the buffet of information. All kinds of information going on. Could be news. Could be update, could be warnings, could be alarms. Speaking of bad news, uh, a couple of days ago, just sometime earlier this week, uh, Maui, the island of Maui, gone through some real uh, crisis of uh, fire that they have up there. Last time I checked, or last night, the death toll is about 80, and they're expecting to have that uh, death toll to go up. <clears throat> it was almost like if you could see in the, uh, in the videos and uh, on the news, looks like uh, the main island of the central part of Maui has been decimated. It looks like it's been bombed from paradise to like Christ. They are expecting, you know, all the history, historical landmark that are like in structures or something, gone. They even have one lady that uh, her house is by the cliff, not too high, you know, overlooking the ocean, which is like picturesque setting. But the fire was so fast that they didn't have Warning, like, I, they, I think they have warning, you know, a siren or something. That didn't get activated. They didn't even get uh, anything from, from their phone. Some of them did. But what happened, just like uh, Maui just gone through some a visit of a typhoon, a real strong one. But what's really ironical is this typhoon didn't have much rain. A lot of strong winds. And that's what triggered this fast uh, spread of fire. <clears throat> the lady who jumped over the cliff 
so that she will not burn. She stayed in the water, on the water for seven hours because everything on top are burning. Just split second. The only, the only uh, way that they found that, that the, their neighborhood was going on fire is when they hear explosions from the gas station, from the gas tanks of cars, even the docks where the boats are, fire went through that, decimated. The average uh, wind speed was about 60 to 85 miles per hour. That is like fast. <laughs> Another thing that's kind of sad is an island surrounded by water, they were going through drought. Uh, as, you know, it's almost like kind of uh, opposite when Washoe, remember, like for the past, every year, past five years, every year, every summer, we have this area by, you know, um, Tahoe area further down going on fire. This year, we're kind of fortunate enough that we didn't have that. We have a lot of water, but in Hawaii, that's what they have. So let's pray for those folks uh, that they've gone through this crisis. Put them in your prayers. <clears throat> uh, speaking of buffet of information, that's why like I said is, you know, we got news also most of the time. That's how we keep up to date, right? But what they found out on the statistics about only 70% of Americans have a great deal of trust and confidence in media. 27% fair amount of trust. Meanwhile, 28% of adults say do not have much confidence. And 38% none at all in newspapers, TV and radio. Oh yeah, uh, you guys rem still remember newspapers? <laughs> because I remember when I every, every time I go to the airport, you know, on the waiting area, Folks who are waiting for their flights, you could hardly see their faces, especially the guys, like a big newspaper, everyone. They don't have newspaper anymore. Everyone is just looking down, and their faces like stuck on their iPhone, their tablets, and iPads. That's the change. But what everybody's looking at is barrage of this information. They could be videos, they could be news, they could be just to spend time while waiting. They said it's almost like half of the world population uses social media. It could be, you know, social media in the form of this Facebook, Netflix, TikTok, Instagram. Or it could be just what they say, you know, FaceTime. This is the sad part also, is 35% customers in the U.S. post negative comments about companies, social media, and 53% post positive comments. And then when it comes to negative uh, information, 63% those folks viewing, looking at those negative uh, information, tends to click it more. The bad thing attracts more people. I don't know why. <clears throat> oh yes, for the Filipinos. What they, what they found out is in the Philippine trends is more uh, extreme. They spend an average of five and a half hours a day in social media community. Five hours. But this could be, they could be at work. They could be anywhere that they spend five hours. And when we are at this interaction like this, we have our minds, our brains, that does all the receiving of this buffet of information. So much. Figure like, you know, you're underneath a waterfall, not underneath a rain because the multitude of everything that's getting dumped 
on us is just realistically so much. And if we are complacent on how to receive this, we are at risk. You know our, hum our, our brains is capable of processing 70,000 thoughts per day. That's what they, you know, all these peop people who are like doing when it comes to studying numbers. But 70,000 ideas, thoughts per day. Just like that. And as far as retaining years in our brain, they said that our brain could handle up to 450 years of base memory. In short, Inside our head is also a universe of its own. You know, we have the universe created by God out on the sky hemisphere, but here also is still, a, you know, a multitude of information, unknowns, a mix of good and bad. These we are getting flooded in. But as a Christian, how are we going to do this? How are we going to, how are we going to tackle this? How are we going to confront this? I have uh, these four types of uh, encouragement because, oh, by the way, the title of my sermons is Words of Encouragement. And how you fulfill to this word of encouragement? By what, why, and how? So what is the advice, you know, basing it from our reference verse. I've said the last part of, you know, verse 8. Worthy of praise, think about these things. Think. Why not just look? Well, when we do something or whatever action we do, the very first thing we do is think about it, right? It's the main thing that I also noticed when I was like studying, you know, and re getting ready and preparing for my sermon. My, my eyes got focused on that word, think of these things. Why is that? Let's take it a notch further, more. Okay, okay, we think. Now, let's take it deeper. From the book of Joshua, it says, Joshua 1, 8. Study this book of instruction continually. Here's the key word. Meditate, meditate on it day and night. Hold on to that thought, Okay. And I will share to you the other half of that verse. When we meditate, we just close our eyes. We have to be in a quiet, private, on our own time, on our own moment, on our own space. Why? We, this is when the time that we have to kind of really personally spend time with him. We let the Holy Spirit come into us. We cannot do this meditation in the middle of commotion. We can't. Even the Bible said, when we are about out to pray, lock yourself in a closet. And it means that, you know, you lock yourself out and some people will say, what if I'm claustrophobic? No. It's, it's simply saying, Supposed to be private, quiet, because we how in how are you gonna be able to hear him talking to you? Because when we are meditating, when we are doing our devotion by ourselves, we're praying for him that he talk to us. Some will say, I never heard him talking to me. Well, that's why. He gave us the word. Through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that's his way of really guiding what book, what chapter, what verses to look at and 
to further meditate on it day and night. So the mind is their screening factor when it comes to doing this. So what advice is overall is about positive thinking. As you could see, as you could, uh, there's about eight virtues that it says, true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, it, it, and if any is an excellent, if anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You got to think it. Because after your thinking process, because you are provided the good stuff, the good vibes, nothing bad. Obviously saying, things of the good thing, uh, think about good things, positive thinkings. Most, mo most motivational speakers, this is what they tell you about. Believe in yourself. What you believe, you could make it happen. Your imagination is only your limitation. And they will claim it, it's their own. The Bible have it already. Uh, there is one even popular book uh, by uh, Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich, something like that. But if you look at it, if you kind of some, you know, watch it on YouTube, most of these motivational speakers, that's what they preach about. Confidence. Have positive attitude. How? What are these advice? Think about what's true and right. Think about that are honest and faith. Honest and faith. We have a term in the Philippines what we call marites. Don't be one. Marites means like gossipers. Consider things that are fair and just. Have to be fair. Balance. That you hear both sides. You know both sides. And then, if you think you could learn or benefit something from it, keep it. Because you will know right away if you hear something, right even the intro, the background of the story, you'll know if it's a bad vibes or something. Turn around. Don't do it. Think about what's pure and good. Here's the word. Focus on things that are clean and not bad. Focus. Going back to when you are spending time with the Lord. The word focus. My personal experience when I'm like doing my devotional, when I'm doing my prayer, uh, like devotional plan and everything, I will shut everything. I put my phone on do not disturb or turn it off. Best thing to do is put it in a different room. And if you could also do it better, is do it the old-fashioned way. Use books or pamphlets and booklets. Because those things will not ring or bother you when you're reading. Because when I'm doing this in the middle of my devotional study, guess what happens? You will hear the dog barking. The phone will ring. Out of anywhere, you thought you got everything covered. And in spite of that, you're already praying. And then you go, oh, I got to pay the bill tomorrow. Oh, I have a doctor's appointment in, by 1 o'clock. And you're going like this. Oh, that hurts. Oh, my hangnail. I got to cut this. Right? It's a battlefield right here. This is a battlefield. And the only way we could arm ourselves is really focusing, holding fast. Think about this thing, meditating on it. Consider action and thoughts that are positive and pure. Consider. It's almost like it's all the same thing, but on a different way to just, it's like, you know, memory aid, study aid, right? 
pay attention to a people that admire, uh, thinks about lovely things like being friendly. Consider things that people say are good and praiseworthy. There's this uh, big celebrity, uh, he's, we call him Fernando Fo, FPJ. I heard one time, the great thing about this guy, when some of her acquaint his acquaintances will tell him something about someone, first thing he's going to say, wait a minute, if what you're going to tell me is something bad about that guy, I don't want to hear it. Cut and dry. Obviously, you know, basically he's got like, all I want to hear from what you're going to tell me is something good about that person. I have a situation, a family situation one time. Both parties are arg in argument, just like mudslinging each other. You are this, you are that. And I go like, I come to the conclusion that it's never going to end. Each one is trying to justify his or her uh, side is better or is the right one. And I go like, time out. All you guys saying are bad stuff against each other. Uh, can you tell me what are some of the good things that he's done to you? And to look again, to think. And the same thing I asked the guy. One thing spectacular that I've noticed, you know, the hostile atmosphere disappeared. It just got replaced by like kind of mellowed, much more receptive, uh, receptive mode. I didn't do any, you know, suggestion or advice telling it. I just like, what are the things, the good things you've seen with your guy? Things, good things you see with your lady. Good stuff, good vibes. Look for virtue and positive qualities. Focus on anything that show goodness and strong characters. Almost the same like what I just said. Think about things that deserve praise and respect. Um, you heard about this thing, uh, this... Uh, so, uh, advice like criticize or correct in private, praise in public. Very obvious, you know, common in workplace. You could tell the dignity of a leader or supervisor if one of his subordinates did something wrong and instead of screaming his throat except on the point that it's like a matter of life and death or some serious injury will happen that you know what they do is normally uh, so and so resty come to my office or hey uh, brother June I like what you did the other day that you did this that kind of cut our time to in half and even bigger Production, production, uh, production effect. Because when you scream on someone, it's also very applicable for our families. Your kid, you know, scream. Kids always do something wrong most of the time, or it's just being a kid. And we scream our guts out, and they have their friends there, they're kind of getting embarrassed. If we could do it, just like, hey, come here. It will, it will, it will put a better respect, you know, from our kids. So why is this important? You know, those uh, those values or truth. Thoughts influence actions. What you think often shows in how you act. It's almost like the saying, garbage in. Garbage out. Good thoughts lead to good action. There you go. 
Not a garbage. It won't be a garbage that you're going to see in action. Thoughts shape your character. Your character is built by what you think about. Good thoughts make you better. Wow. You have this thought. Good, right? And then you're going to come out of it the improved version better. Why? Because our human mind got this thought process. You got, you know, shared by something, a solution, right? And then you go like, hmm, maybe I could do it a little bit better to cut some time to make it cheaper. Or instead of uh, just telling my kids this is how you do it, maybe also show him or her how to do it. Instead of just saying, you messed up, son. You messed up, my, my darling. You make it better. It's not like kind of something good and something bad that you're going to discipline your kids. But how can you do this? The final, the final question. Good, choose good thoughts. Say no to bad mean, to bad mean or wrong thought. Only let good, true, and kind thoughts. Again, our minds got to have these filtering mo moments. Keep good company. You ha have you ever had a friend, someone who's always got this negative view in life? Like there's this uh, story, there's this friends going, right? One of them is always negative in, you know, his, his outlook in life. One is just always there to listen to him. Well, the, this guy who always have this bad uh, or pessimist in life, he, he hit rock bottom. He went up to the top story of the building. And he's about ready to jump and commit suicide. The other friend found out, went after his friend, and he tried to talk to him. Well, the same thing. All he did was just like say negative things, and the other guy, who's not really strong, to, to really, you know, convince him, they winded up <laughs> jumping together. Fill your minds with positive and admirable thoughts. I have a personal experience with that. Uh, guys, uh, for Filipinos, we have this cable, like we call TFC. And one thing, uh, one, one of the shows that they have there is this uh, TV Patrol, uh, Philippine News. <laughs> Me and my wife will be watching it. We start before the halfway of the halfway of the news. My wife will be all upset. <laughs> She's mad. And I go like, "What's up? What's wrong?" I hate it. They, they are so corrupt. They killing us and everything. I go like, "This is not good." We started on a good vibes, and now you're just really, you know, pissed off and hating the world, hating the Philippines. And I go like, that's why we're here in America, because we're trying away from that. Got it short. Like, we got our <laughs> subscription. In the, same, in the same page with that, uh, we have what we call teles, teleserie, right? Most of these teleseries are drama. They're good actors and actresses. <laughs> and my kid says, I don't like those shows. Why? They're all crying most of the time. They're very good criers. But, you know, as a form of entertainment, it's good. But one thing we have to really watch out for ourselves is we don't get carried into that emotion that we have to learn to separate it as the entertainment only. 
Have you noticed some of those, like we call them the, the villain in the, some of the stories? I remember when I was a young kid, you know, like the Fernando guy that I told you, he's the lead actor, like the, the hero. And then some of these guys were the bad boys, the villain. Even after the show, that you know, you watch them in like regular uh, show or something. They're not. It's not a film. And I hate. And I hate their boys, because they're like kind of the one who hurt or killed the lead actor, or like kind of killed the family or the friends of the lead actor. That's how good acting they are. But you see how much bad stuff that it implanted on your heart and your minds. Basically, by thinking about good things and being like Jesus, you'll have a better life and make the world a better place. What we put into our minds comes in our actions and words. Like I said, garbage in, garbage out. But upon hearing this, don't do that. Good vibes in. Good vibes out. But we have to really control that and then put it into action. Because it goes to the point that exposure to God's word is not enough. Hearing this, about eight virtues, right? You learned it. True, commendable, honorable, good, beautiful, lovely. It doesn't have to stop right there. Why? Because it must be led, lead to obedience. If all we know is just receiving it, it's the same thing we learn something, right? Or you have attended a, a convention for uh, self-improvement. You are overloaded with information. But if you don't put into action everything you have learned, everything you nod in and clap for it, if you don't put it into action, they're useless. It, it's a form of disobedience because 1 Samuel 15.22 said, obedience is better than sacrifice because you could say, well, I'm not disobeying it. I'll do it later. I said it before. Delayed obedience is also a matter of sin. I told you earlier about Joshua 1.8 that studied this book of instruction, meditated day and night. The other half of that, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Everything. Only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. Even Apostle Paul, the second half of that, uh, the verse 9, what he said is like, we have to emulate what he taught. Follow him. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. Practice meanings it's an action word. We got to do it. We got to act upon it. Have a blessed day, brothers and sisters. Thank you.